Okay, everyone. <clears throat> What's up? Goldie here. And I'm going to be going over uh, week 13 here in the NFL. Um, we've got uh, an interesting week this week where, at least compared to the last couple of weeks, um, when we've had some pretty boring games, low scoring, uh, and, and DFS winning tournament teams have topped out uh, right around the 200 mark. This week, I think that's going to be, um, you know, we're, we're going to have quite a different story. We've got uh, at least three games projecting over 50 with a total so far uh, in, in the early to mid part of the week. And we've got, man, maybe uh, four more games in the in the mid 40s. So there's going to be some fantasy points to, to go around here. And there's probably only a couple of games that we just want to full-on ignore, and that we can full-on ignore with some um, pretty high confidence levels. Um, so that said, uh, we are probably going to yap a little bit here, you know, as uh, as usual, uh, because we've got some some good spots to to talk about. So um, let's just get right into it uh, quickly. I want to just kind of illustrate how we're going to be pr probably pretty spread out uh, all throughout the week here. Um, in terms of of stack exposures and and ownership, all right. There's only a couple of spots that are really going to stand out, and you'll be able to kind of see those as we kind of go through each of the games here. But um, you know, over the last several weeks, we've had one or two quarterbacks that are really popping in the early ownership projections uh, that then ended, ended up coming in with some pretty high ownership figures uh, once we got to the weekend. We don't have that this week. We've actually got everybody that's pretty well spread apart. And that just sort of uh, corroborates the fact that we've got a lot of games that we can get to and that we can consider in a lot of different spots where we can try and get different. So this is going to be a really, really highly variant tournament week. Um, so buckle up, everybody, because um, there's going to be some spots that pop this week that uh, are probably going to be uh, quite unexpected. So that said, let's just get into it. Um, this is one of the first games, or the first game rather, um, it's one of the games, Giants of Minnesota, that we're probably going to be able to stay off of a little bit. That said, you know, we don't want to totally ignore it. There's some, some decent pieces here. Mike White won tournaments last week, so we can't really ignore that, right? At 5,400, um, he and, and Garrett Wilson at 53, you got a big price bump, but this isn't the worst combination. And, you know, it's probably a little bit noisy. The volume was, uh, pretty touchdown dependent, um, with Garrett Wilson last week, but at 4,300, like he was just too cheap. And at 5,300, I think he's still too cheap. The Jets here, they will, you know, with, with Zach Wilson back there, they, they would like to run the football. Um, but they do have some tendencies. Robert Sala kind of does want to throw the football a little bit. He let Zach Wilson kind of um, kind of get out there and make those mistakes. So uh, those mistakes he did make, and you know now we're now we get Mike White season, right? So um, we did see that last week he threw for three, and it was at least three scores. I forget how much yardage, but. Um, it, it was definitely like it, it was on winning tournament teams last week. Now, is that going to be the case this week? Probably not. Uh, despite the fact that Minnesota's pass defense is pretty gettable. Uh, who can we play some Garrett Wilson for sure. Don't forget about Michael Carter, 5,400. Uh, if James Robinson is out or is a healthy scratch once again, this week, as he was last week, um, that puts Michael Carter in play. Vikings more gettable through the air than they are on the ground. But uh, once again, the Jets are going to probably try to be pretty balanced here as they're rolling into Minnesota, um, you know, catching, I believe, three here. But this total sitting about 45, 46. So could be some sneaky points. And if we're going to see some sneaky points, well, in most scenarios, uh, it's going to be coming from both teams. Certainly the Jets could get blown out you know, blown out of the building here, but, um, you know, they're also expected to score. And as of right now at Minnesota laying three total 45 and a half, uh, they are projected for 21 and a quarter, right? So, um, 
Minnesota is is attackable, and they are attackable mostly through the air. So don't forget about some Garrett Wilson. Don't totally balk at the ownership. I mean, it is elevated, but he's a really good value play. And a 5,300, this will probably stick right about here. I don't think you're going to see the 25% steam that you saw in some tournaments last week with Garrett Wilson. Um, the, the price tag now kind of prevents that. Uh, you can also consider Corey Davis and, and Tyler Conklin. Uh, don't think that's bad necessarily at all. Um, Elijah Moore would probably just have uh, volume concerns here. So uh, Jets defense 2,600. Don't think this is horrible necessarily. Um, there's a good unit over here, and it's really why they won seven or eight games or whatever they won this season. So uh, keep that in mind as a, as a cheap kind of play. To uh, I mean, Kirk Cousins is... You know, isn't uh, totally infallible here, so he can definitely turn the ball over. Um, on the on the Minnesota side, we have Justin Jefferson. You can play him literally against everybody again in every single matchup, uh, every single week, uh, pretty much regardless of the price. Um, I hate saying that because you know it's sort of famous last words territory, but um, 8900 is uh, is aggressive, but we can still see that he's projecting point per dollar and value wise just fine. And at this price tag in this particular matchup, I think 12 to 15% ownership is probably about accurate in terms of where he should be. So not, it's probably not going to be a priority for me. Um, I would prefer probably just to be getting, as opposed to stacks, to just singleton sort of one-off pieces in most scenarios here. That said, if you do want to stack and you are projecting points, um, go ahead and, and throw in Kirk Cousins, 5,700. He's perfectly fine. Point per dollar and value-wise uh, and ownership numbers are all great. So good price for him. And some of the turnover risk is sort of uh, priced in at that level. So uh, it's perfectly fine. Dalvin Cook, 7,200. Haven't really seen Dalvin pop this season, but uh, this is a really, really good price for him. One of the lowest we've seen him in a while. So um, pretty good point per dollar and, and good value play here at, at also low ownership. Once again, uh, good run defense over here for the Jets. That is their best unit. So um, just something to be aware of. It might not be the week necessarily for Dalvin to pop 430 since he, he really he's had much better matchups and he hasn't done it. So you know, why would we project it in a bad matchup? Um, well, he was much easier to fade when he was 81 to 8,200 than he is at 7,200. So uh, they still use him in the passing game. And, um, you know, 7,200, like I said, is a really, really good price for him. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, I dare say he's near the number two receiving option in this offense now. 5,200, very, very strong play here. I think he's probably a better play than George Kittle down in the afternoon. Um, I think he's maybe even a better play than, than Mark Andrews uh, in the Denver game. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, that said, this is once again a, a, a good pass defense as well. So, uh, But he's getting volume and point per dollar value play, ownership, but like everything's great for pretty much all of these guys. You can certainly still play Adam Thielen at 5,000. Um, you do have volume concerns. He's really competing for the number two job now with Hawkinson. Um, KJ Osborne really only in deep tournament teams, probably not the slate for him. Uh, if you want to throw him as a as kind of a super cheap one-off into st other stacks down here, don't think that's a horrible play, but really only in deep tournament teams would I be considering that. 3,700 for the Vikings defense. Think they're probably too expensive here. Um, I did, I don't think the, the Vikings defense is all that good. So. Um, not to say that the Jets defense is something or the Jets offense is something I really want to avoid, but uh, 3,700 probably a bit stiff. Uh, moving on, Washington and the Giants, probably another one of these games that we could, you know, almost out of the gate kind of ignore. Um, Washington laying two, two and a half on the road in a total of about 40 right now against the Giants. Um, I made the game a little tighter than two, two and a half, but Washington, I do believe does deserve to be a favorite here. I think they're a better football team. They're, they're better on offense. They're more balanced on offense. Um, not to say they're potent necessarily, but, um, and, and they're definitely better on defense than the giants here. So how do we want to attack with Washington? If we are getting to some of them, I think the best way to attack is probably once again with Terry McLaurin, 5,800, uh, I think he's a fine play. He's probably just a cash play, though. Uh, have real concerns about upside in tournaments for him. Um, but the the workload at six, eight targets or whatever every single week is 
uh, generally pretty solidified. We usually want to attack the Giants uh, on the ground, right? And that would be Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson territory. Now, Robinson popped last week, but Gibson popped the week before. So uh, I think both of these guys are... You can keep them sort of in your in your pools. Um, I, I once again have upside concerns for tournaments uh, in the in the sense that it's just going to be hard uh, for a 52 or a 53 hundred dollar running back in a kind of a split timeshare uh, to get there and win tournaments for you this week when you're likely to need uh, a solid 25 to 30 out of uh, out of pretty much every one of your your guys. So um, that said, uh, I think both of them are, are, are okay. Yeah, the prices aren't bad, but um, it's just volume concerns here that I really worry about. Commander's defense, 3,300. Uh, don't think this is horrible. Uh, you could probably leave them in and point per dollar, and they're pushing about a 20x value play here. So it, it's not bad. Uh, probably a little expensive, just kind of in general for the upside, because the Giants on the other side are so rush heavy. So really not much from the Washington offense uh, for me this week. Last week we could have played Taylor Heineke. Uh, it was a really, really good spot. They're going to have trouble um, kind of hitting the same sort of projected upside this week against the Giants. So on the other side, the Giants want to run the football, and that usually means that uh, we've got some kind of methodical and, and slow-paced games. Um, they want to give the ball and feed Saquon Barkley, and Daniel Jones, he doesn't really throw the ball a whole hell of a lot, so we can't really get to the pass catchers with any um, you know relative degree of confidence. They will probably get Bellinger back, who was... You know, a decent target for Danny Dimes earlier in the year, but uh, you know, Dimes just he scrambles a lot, he runs a lot, so it's really just Saquon and it's Daniel Jones. So, um, you know, both of these guys are going to project just fine. Obviously, at Dimes' price here at 5,500, uh, the point per dollar and value metrics are really going to pop for you. So you can play him naked. Uh, I don't think this is bad. Um, once again, questions in tournaments about overall upside you're probably going to need 30 to 35 this week from your quarterback and I'm I, I struggled to see how Daniel Jones gets there uh, all that often but that said there's upside at the price if you do only need 25 and you just make the nuts elsewhere then 5500 Daniel Jones naked could be a one of the pieces that gets you there uh, you could run a Daniel Jones and a Daniel Bellinger um sort of super cheap contrarian stack and just stack some of the games elsewhere. Uh, I don't think that's horrible. Like we saw that that sort of construction won last week with Mike White and Garrett Wilson, right? Cheap quarterback, cheap number one receiver or cheap receiving piece um, and stacking everybody else. So it's it's within range that that could get there. Uh, that said, in general, don't want to get to the... The Giants passing game all that often. Giants defense 2,900. Same deal. Not super excited about it. Um, but it is a very low total game if you want. I think the Giants are live to cover three here. Uh, if you can get a three, I think that's a pretty decent Giants play. I don't, like I said, I made the number a little bit tighter than that, despite the fact having made Washington a favorite as well. Um, three points, I think, is, is probably too much. Uh, kind of boring overall game for fantasy, however. Um, moving on. A little bit more interesting here in Tennessee and Philly. Uh, Derrick Henry for the Titans. Obviously, he is the number one, um, and they want to run all of the offense or as much of the offense as possible through him. Catching a, catching a little bit out of the backfield um, is DH this year, and that, I've mentioned before, does significantly increase his upside. Um, I believe last week it was actually... Uh, a screen that he took down to the goal line, you know, ran for 65 yards or whatever it was and fumbled. Uh, but, you know, nevertheless, it was a screen, right? So something to keep in mind um, that does sort of suggest that the 8,100 price tag uh, isn't necessarily pricing in only running back volume or rushing volume that it, uh, it had in the past. So that said, he is 
projecting value-wise along with Tannehill, um, pretty well point per dollar at, at this price tag, certainly. And at about 12, 15% ownership, I think it's, it's all right. Uh, we did see Philly get kind of gashed by both Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon last week. Um, so something to keep in mind, Philly maybe not nearly as strong defensively as their early season performance suggested. So uh, Tennessee's a good football team over here too. And, you know, there were, we're into the late November, early December sort of Tennessee season where they just start steamrolling people. Um, so that is a, a route here that could get Derrick Henry uh, into some winning tournament teams. Um, that said, if you want to play some Tannehill, I don't think this is bad either. Uh, I think Philly's probably going to be able to score a little bit on the other side. At 5,200 is a pretty good price for Tanny, and he is very, very efficient. They don't throw it a lot, but when they do throw it, like he's got a couple of weapons now, Traylon Burks, Robert Woods, Westbrook Akine. They have been using Austin Hooper a little bit more as well. Favorite here would be Traylon Burks at 46. Really good price for him. Kid is very explosive. Uh, he is an excellent, excellent piece for this offense to get back. Uh, would probably once again stay off of Robert Woods, just kind of a possession receiver anymore. Uh, it's an okay price at 43, but not going to get a hell of a lot of volume. Uh, Westbrook Akine, probably just a deep tournament dart. Um, favorite way to play this would be Tanny and Traylon Burks if we're running it back with like a Philly piece. Um, throw in a Derrick Henry as well. I think that's perfectly viable. And probably, I mean, you can mix in, like I said, Austin Hooper 3000, getting a little bit more volume recently. And it's, uh, it's okay to mix him in Titans defense, 2200. You could do worse. Um, I think they are live to cover a number here. They're catching, I believe five right now. Um, I made it a little bit tighter than that, but mostly in line with the market. And we've got kind of a middling total here at about 44, 45. So uh, it's very well within range that Tennessee just leans on Derrick Henry in a running game and the Tennessee defense sort of stifles the Philly offense a little bit. Um, now, I generally don't like playing defenses against Philly because they're very, very uh, dynamic with Jalen Hurts back there. But... Um, it's, I mean, they're 2,200. This is a good team over there, and there, there is a little bit of upside at that price. So on the other side with Philly, Jalen Hurst, we saw that what he can do with his legs. Um, 8,000, it's fine. Um, Tennessee is more gettable usually in the passing game. So, uh, but, but, I mean, he's a quarterback. It, it's kind of, you know, rushing metrics um, against quarterbacks are, you know, pretty noisy in general. So, um you know, we've seen that against a bad rush defense, what a good rushing quarterback can do, like a Justin Fields against Detroit or Jalen Hurts uh, against Green Bay, these sorts of things. So uh, he's very well playable at 8,000. Obviously, he's going to project probably uh, at the top here uh, in terms of raw projection, but point per dollar and, and value score uh, at this price tag are, are fantastic as well. Um, very low, at least at the moment, standard deviation of fantasy points. So that suggests that most of the market is quite in line with the, you know, relatively the same number, um, you know, low to, to mid twenties in in projection, which usually suggests that that's not something we should be ignoring. Um, however, with Jalen Hurts' running, rushing upside, and same thing with Miles Sanders, as we saw last week as well, these two combined for about 300 yards rushing, and it really totally sapped the upside of the passing game. So it makes it difficult to get to a lot of the passing game in general. Um, that said, if you want to play narrative, A.J. Brown going back to Tennessee, or, I mean, getting Tennessee uh, in Philly here, I'm sure he's going to want to feast. I'm sure these guys are going to want to feed him the football. Um, 7,800, I don't think this is a... a I think... In general, the price is too high for A.J. Brown's workload, given the other guys on the offense. Um, same thing with Devontae Smith. I think in general, the prices are a bit too high. But, I, we're, as I mentioned at the outset, we're going to have ownership spread really all throughout uh, pretty much every team this week. So if we're targeting points in this game, and it's also another route that's well within range that this total could get blasted through 45 points and you could see both Philly and Tennessee score some. I mean, we saw Green Bay, who's got a really bad offense, uh, put up 30 points on Philly 
just this last week, right, on primetime. So uh, they can get scored upon. Uh, obviously, they turned the ball over. That helped Green Bay get there a little bit, um, you know, which is, once again, why Tennessee's defense isn't the worst play in the world, 2200. So there are different uh, sort of game scripts that could suggest that the passing games uh, on both sides of this here, uh, you know, for Tennessee and for Philly, can get there at 7,862. Um, not priority plays necessarily. I wouldn't really be stoked about one offing one of these guys uh, or either one of them necessarily. Probably prefer them mostly just in stacks. Quez Watkins at 3,800, probably too expensive as well. I'd prefer him down at like 31, 33 in that range. Uh, if I were going to throw him into deep tournament pools, uh, just not going to project value wise near high enough and you would have to force him in. So I don't think this is a very good play trying to get to him. Unfortunately, um, the, all of the tight end targets really have, <laughs> they've really only been filtered down to Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders in the running game, right? Um, they're not, at least as yet, they're not going to the passing game um, because they're certainly not going to Jack Stoll. So um, makes Miles Sanders a little bit more playable only in the passing game, but... As we saw this last week, both Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott got some work out of the backfield. Now, Boston Scott's more of their special teams guy, but Gainwell got legit work. Um, and he spelled Miles Sanders, even though Miles Sanders you know, didn't really need it. And he got, whatever, 20 carries, 150 yards or something like that. Um, so you can get to a lot of the pieces on Philly. Uh, I would be careful that there's probably, I mean, it's probably a fifth favorite stack, sixth favorite stack uh, to target this week. Um, but it's it's not out of uh, question that they could actually get there. Okay, moving on. Um, Deshaun Watson and the Browns um, heading into Houston. Really don't know how to project Deshaun Watson here. Um, not sure how much work he's been getting with, uh, you know, like not sure how comfortable he is with the offense. Um I mean, we just have a lot of questions here. And in the projections, you know, we even have a couple of places still projecting Jacoby Brissett in. This is not going to be him. So all of these numbers are mostly going to change as soon as it is confirmed uh, from Stefanski that it is Deshaun Watson. I, th I think it all but has been. Uh, maybe just some of the models a bit late to adjust. Um, still early in the week, only Wednesday. Um, how do we want to attack Houston here? Well, this game, I mean, it's sitting... Cleveland laying seven on the road, which is fine. Uh, total of 47, kind of a sneaky high total here. And that could suggest that Cleveland's either going to just beat the crap out of Houston, which is definitely possible, uh, or Houston is also going to score. So, which is also, you know, pretty well within range, right? Um, Cleveland's defense, not the best unit in the world. They held Tampa to whatever they held them to, 18, 20 points last week, but Tampa's bad, you know. So um, Cleveland, over the last several weeks, has really suggested that they're very, very vulnerable here. Um, and it's still Kyle Allen's season for Houston on the other side. So uh, not totally unreasonable to project some points here. And if that's the case, I think we can play Deshaun Watson. Um, uh, football only, okay, like this guy can put up points. And... Um, at 6,500, I think it's a playable price tag for him. We're going to see the ownership and the projection probably steam up a little bit. Um, but at a 3.0 point per dollar and a 50 50x value play, I mean, these are numbers that you can't really ignore. And if we ignore this name over here, if we just looked at these numbers over here, you know, that that'd be, um, you know, this entire team would be somebody that we would want to look at. So um, Nick Chubb at 8,000. I think this is a fantastic spot, probably the best spot in football for anybody. Um, and he's one of the best ru pure rushing backs in football as well. 8,000, think this ownership is probably too low um, for this spot. I think you can play him in stacks. I think you can play him as a one-off. Uh, I, I really do like Nick Chubb here. Um, not going to project as high because he, the price tag really kind of, um, you know, value-wise, that, that keeps his point per dollar and his, and his value metrics down a little bit because he's so expensive all the time. But uh, we know that he has 35-point upside, um, and definitely in this matchup, he could bust for 200 yards here uh, pretty easily, I think. 
Um, if we are playing Watson, you can play him because he can run. Um, so you don't have to play him necessarily with a pass catcher, but you can play him with Amari or DPJ. You can also mix in a David Njoku at 3,900. who has been getting a little bit more work now that he's back healthy. I think the price is probably a little elevated for Njoku, uh, but I think it's perfectly fine as one of these three to four K tight ends that you can just kind of keep in the mix. 4,800 for Kareem Hunt. I think most game scripts are probably going to script him out. Um, that said, they could very well, the Browns run all over Houston here, and that could increase Kareem Hunt's uh, rushing upside. Doesn't get a lot of carries anymore, m- used more so in the passing game. So we generally want to target him mostly in, in pass-heavy game scripts, and that's unlikely to be one of those. Um, in this game against Houston, but that said, if we are expecting Houston to score a little bit uh, and the Browns to put up some points, um, that is a route that uh, you, we could see sort of materialize in, in that Kareem Hunt spells Nick Chubb a little bit. I mean, Chubb could run for 165 yards and two scores or whatever and and really only get you know, 22 carries or something, and Kareem Hunt could very well get 20 carries himself. Um, not out of the realm of possibility that we see 40 carries on the ground here against Houston. Uh, so keep that in mind in a high total game. Um, you play Brown's defense, 3,900. I mean, it's not great. You know, they're very expensive. Probably other defenses I'd prefer to get to if I were paying that much. Um, probably Baltimore, namely. But, you know, it, it's not the worst because Houston's offense is, is really, really poor. Um Let's uh, let's get to them right now, and it is going to be Kyle Allen still. Um, 5000 for him, I mean, he's going to project well uh, point per dollar and value-wise. There's just no upside. Um, you know, that said, I think he's in okay cash play this week, given the mid-15, you know, mid-teens projection and very low ownership. Uh, good point per dollar and value, as I mentioned. I think it's okay, and in a high total game, you could do worse than a $5,000 quarterback. Um, you know, with a $4,200 pass catcher, if you want to do like a little mini cash stack or something like that. Uh, Damian Pierce in the running game at 5,900, probably a bit expensive for my tastes uh, personally, um, but this is a pretty decent spot against Cleveland's run defense over here. Not bad at all, and it's an okay, you know, low 40s value play. It's perfectly fine. Ownership probably a little elevated as of right now, uh, but this will flesh out a little bit more. Probably see this come down uh, once we get some more news um, about some guys later to come out later in the week. Um, Outside of that, Brandon Cooks, I think he's okay. If you are stacking Houston as like super contrarian deep tournament teams, running it back with a Nick Chubb or an Amari or a DPJ or something, I think that's all right to, to mix in Brandon Cooks into your pools, um, but not a priority for me. Uh, Texans defense not touching them. They they could give up 40 this week. Uh, okay, we could be able to get through this one pretty quickly. Denver is terrible. Um and really, Baltimore, I, did, I don't think is all that great either. You know, I, I mentioned last week that I thought Jacksonville was pretty live. Um, you know, their, their defense didn't actually get there, but Jacksonville won the game. And, um, you know, I thought them catching, I think, four it was, was probably a bit too high. This week, Denver is catching, uh, I believe, eight, eight and nine. Um that's probably okay. I made it a little bit tighter than that because I really just don't respect uh, Baltimore's offense very much. Um, and certainly in this in this spot against Denver's defense, I think they could have a little bit of trouble uh, moving the football all that regularly. And you know that doesn't mean that I'm rushing to the window to bet Denver to cover a touchdown against Baltimore or anything like that. But uh, this is a low total game, 38 and a half. Probably not a lot of fantasy goodness to go around. Um, Man, 5200 for Russ. Like, didn't think we'd ever see this price on him again, and yet here we are. Um, their offense is just totally out of sorts, and they, they just can't do anything. Um, the one playable piece last week that could have opened it up for him was Latavius Murray. He actually did have a decent first half. They just didn't give him the football at all in the second half. Um, but this week against Baltimore's run defense really just kind of makes him unplayable. Uh Cortland Sutton, he's all right as a one-off piece at 5,500 again. Um, but once again, it'd really only be a cash play, and it's really kind of a uh, close-your-eyes cash play, to be quite honest. Um, not sure about Jerry Judy just yet, still dealing with an ankle. Uh, 
Greg Dulcich at 34. He's probably my favorite if I do get to any of the pass catchers here. Um, once again, you could do worse. Actually, you probably couldn't do worse than Russ Wilson uh, and a pass catcher as of right now. Just Denver's offense is just so, so bad. Um, Denver's defense, however, 2400 This is a pretty good price. and They were 3800 last week. Obviously, much different spot. But um, I don't think Baltimore's offense is a whole hell of a lot better than Carolina's offense, to be quite honest. And at 2400 I think this is a playable price for a pretty good unit over here. Uh, Denver, if they have... I'm sure people have seen the the stat floating around. Um, if they had scored 18 points in regulation this season, they'd be nine and two, or, or something. Like this is a really really good unit over here. So um, 2400 is an excellent price. This is probably too cheap for them. If you do get to any of the other pass catchers, um, it'd probably only be Kendall Hinton. Uh, but once again, if Jerry Judy is in, I, that probably takes me off of. Uh, hitting entirely, and it, I would rather just focus on Dulcich. If Judy plays, I don't even want to touch him at 5,700. Um, on the other side, for Baltimore, uh, it is Lamar. It is Mark Andrews. Um, Gus Edwards is back. He did get all of the work in the running back room last week, which makes Kenyon Drake wholly unplayable uh, down here at 5,300. He got two carries or something. It's something just egregious. Um so it is Gus, and at 5400 I think this is an all-right price uh, to attack Denver's really the one weakness, and that's the rush defense over here uh, for the Broncos. So um, Baltimore does want to run the football, and unfortunately a lot of the rushing metric data is coming from Lamar since they've had so many questions in the running back room all season. So at 7,800, playing Lamar naked, I don't think this is bad. I probably wouldn't play him this week with Mark Andrews, but that doesn't mean you can't. 6,600 for him, and he's definitely the number one option in the offense. I, I think it's fine. Um, but it, it is kind of an expensive stack with not a whole hell of a lot of upside in this particular matchup. Um, but Denver could very well, since they do struggle with the run a little bit, uh, struggle to contain Lamar Jackson. Um so 78, I don't think this is bad at all. Pretty good point per dollar, pretty good value play over here. And once again, low ownership on the quarterback. And Lamar, we know that he can scramble. He could throw for 200 yards and, and run two scores in, throw for a score or something like that. And that could definitely get you there at 7,800. So it's not the, not a totally crazy play, but really don't want to target much of this offense just kind of in general. Um, moving on, Green Bay and Chicago. We got a lot of questions here, so this is going to be kind of quick, I guess. Um, Aaron Rodgers, not sure if he's going to play. He, he's suggesting that he's going to play, but he's dealing with a busted thumb, and now he's got like a broken rib or a tweaked oblique or, or something. Um, they could probably just shoot him up for the oblique, but the thumb is a different story. He was he did come out and throw the ball pretty well against Philly, and uh, you know he looked pretty good. Uh, Green Bay's offense looked all right, but I think Roger, he are, he either fell on the thumb or hit somebody's helmet or something uh, and banged it up a little bit. So something to consider. That said, Chicago's defense is terrible, um, and even with a hobbled Aaron Rodgers, he could very well still get there. And at 5800 is a pretty good price for him. Um, once again, good point per dollar, good value play over here, pushing 50. I think it's it's fine to get to some Green Bay offense if he plays. If it is Jordan Love, <clears throat> excuse me, Jordan Love at 5100. Uh, I think this is a pretty good play as well. This kid can chuck it, man. He's been sitting behind Aaron Rodgers, learning from one of the best in the game for the last three, four seasons. I think there's a good bit of upside for him in the future uh, because I'd be kind of surprised if if Aaron Rodgers um, is still with Green Bay next year. So if Rodgers is out, uh, I think you're getting to a cheap Jordan Love, 5,100. I think that's perfectly playable. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, both of these guys I think are playable um, in deep tournament pools. I think that, I think it's fine. 6,900 is a pretty good price for Aaron Jones. Um, they're using him plenty out of the backfield. They're lining up him up in the slot a good bit as well. Um, so they're using him uh, as both a, the number one running back and a, a pass catcher, kind of in the, the CMC role a little bit. Um you can play some Green Bay wide receivers as well. 5,400 for Lazard. Uh, I think I'd probably prefer him to a 5,200 Christian Watson. Uh, Watson's price tag is inflated because of all of the touchdowns he's scored. 
Um, he's caught like 10 balls, and, and six of them have been for touchdowns or something in the last four weeks or whatever it is. Um, so really, really noisy production numbers here. Uh, that's why his projection is still pretty low. Um, that said, I do, if Rodgers plays, I, I like Tunyon. Um, I'm less enthused with Tunyon than if, you know, if Jordan Love plays, but I uh, don't think he's totally, um, you know, exable uh, necessarily. Uh, so I think getting to some of the Green Bay offense here could be warranted. Probably, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe third or fourth, fifth on the, the favorite stack list. So kind of down there, uh, similar to Philly, um, but, you know, not uh, not totally unplayable. I think my favorite way to play them would probably just be one-off and filler pieces um, and, and getting to more potent stacks elsewhere, but definitely playable in contrarian stacks if you'd like. With Chicago, we the question's here. Uh, Justin Fields, are not sure what he's going to do. Um, they, I mean, some places have Semyon projected. Uh, other places obviously have Peterman here. So who knows what's going to go down with the Bears um, and the shenanigans that they pulled, you know, uh, pre-kick last week. It's kind of garbage. So who the hell knows? Um, if Fields plays, I do like Fields. Uh, Green Bay's defense, we saw what Jalen Hurts did to him. Um, they, could, they couldn't stop him at all, and, and nobody was anywhere near him. So uh, Justin Fields could have a field day, so to speak. Um, same thing with David Montgomery at 6,200. I think this is an okay price. I'm more into David Montgomery if Fields is out. Uh, once again, Green Bay's rush defense is awful. So that's really how we want to attack. Um, if Fields is out, you could play some of the pass catchers, Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool, just because the prices are really good. Cole Komet you can mix in, 3,800 as well. Uh, if, he, if Fields is out, I want nothing to do with the pass catch catchers over here and it would be David Montgomery for me only um, Bears defense 2700 don't think this is bad um, really I, I mean it, it's kind of bad because they're kind of bad uh, price isn't bad is I, I guess a, a better way to to frame it um, they're going to project okay just kind of middling value 20 point per dollar you know it's nothing crazy but they're a 2700 defense you know not a priority to get to but um, you know not the worst play in the world Jacksonville, Detroit should be a pretty high-scoring and exciting game here. Uh, I like Jacksonville last week, as I mentioned. I think it's a pretty sneaky good team over here, um, you know, despite the uh, pretty poor record uh, from the Jaguars. Um, they get Detroit this week, and as we can see here, there's really only a couple of spots they are going to pop in ownership. Um, Trevor Lawrence a bit more at 5,900. I think this is perfectly fine. We've seen that last week uh, when kind of required to throw the football, uh, they can throw the football. So it was he and Zay Jones that kind of went off. And Zay Jones still cheap, 4900 I think you can still play him. We've been playing him for the last month and a half. You can still mix him into your player, your tournament pools. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine. Marvin Jones, I would once again stay off. Um, he's just not getting enough volume. He should be 3K flat, you know, at the stone men. Um, Evan Ingram is 3K flat. And if you're playing a lot of Jacksonville teams, which I think is probably warranted against Detroit, um, you can mix in some Evan Ingram. Now, my favorite piece here, you know, quickly we'll go over Christian Kirk, 6,300. In general, I think that's probably a little expensive for him. But, um, you know, if we're playing passing stacks here, I think, you know, certainly don't X him out or anything. Um, favorite piece here is Travis Etienne. Now, we got to keep an eye on him, uh, see whether his foot is actually okay and if they're going to let him go. Um, if they do let him go, this is... I think probably the best play of the entire week uh, at Travis Etienne, 6,400 in a very high total game. He's going to get a boatload of volume, and the ownership really hasn't adjusted for that yet. So if this number sticks, uh, it won't, because as soon as he is announced in, this is going to steam upwards to, to 20% or so. Uh, if it doesn't, then get all of the ETN that you can get. This is an excellent spot for him, and um, you know th this price is just way too low. Uh, for his role in the offense. So really do like Jacksonville once again. I think you could also consider the Jags defense because Goff is bad on the other side. 2,700 uh, for that unit over there um, with the Jaguars. I don't think it's really terrible at all. Um, that said, if we are playing this game and expecting points, um, generally I 
stay off of defenses in high total games, but it, I don't um, I don't necessarily fully ignore them and X them out of my pool. Um, and that reason being that there's just more opportunity to go around, right? And and Goff is uh, highly volatile, and he could turn the ball over in a heartbeat. So wouldn't be surprised if we see Jacksonville score a defensive touchdown here. Um, that said, if we are just playing some Detroit pieces, um, you can play Goff, 5,300. Like, it's a good price for him, good point per dollar, good value play, very low ownership once again. Amon Ra is going to lead the, the ownership, you know, until ETN is announced in. Um, but Amon Ra at 7,100, like, this is the only op- passing option in the offense. Like, they have Khalif Raymond and DJ Chark, but they just don't use them enough. And at 38, 3,900, or 39, 3,800, respectively, uh, they're just not offering a whole lot of value. And as we can see here, those value pieces are, you know, sub 20. So, um, really nothing great there. It is Amon Ra at 7,100. I think this price too cheap in this type of matchup. Um, I think Jacksonville's pass defense is, is pretty okay, but, uh, you know, so they could zero in on Amon Ra here, but uh, at 7,100, he's just going to get too much volume in general to make this a poor play. So um, ownership is probably about where it should be, and it's probably where he's going to end up, 20 to 25%, give or take, and I think that's a fine play to, you know, get uh, get with the field or get some decent exposure to Amon Ra. Uh, Jamal Williams, uh, once again, it is, you know, Swift's been hurt, and they're only using him in the passing game, very, you know, sparing carries. Um, so at 6,000, I think this is perfectly fine also. Not my favorite play since Jacksonville's defense is, you know, respectable. But uh, we, we've seen that Jamal Williams, they'll just give it to him on the goal line. Um, and he could rush in three scores or, or whatever. So uh, I think he's definitely playable in, in stacks. Probably wouldn't be one-offing Jamal Williams, but... Um, it's possible. Same thing with the Jags defense over here with the Lions. Um, they're same thing as the Jags defense, rather. At 2,800 for the Lions, I'm not touching them um, in this spot, even though there's probably going to be opportunity. This unit is just awful. They should be 1,800 you know, before we'd consider them. Okay, Pittsburgh and Atlanta moving on. Um, try and get through these last few games here quickly, guys. Uh I think this is one of the spots we can get to this week that's going to be very, very overlooked. Um, this game is pick, and total's at about 43. So the number is pretty low, total-wise. Uh, I think that we could potentially see some offense here, but I think it's going to mostly come from the Pittsburgh side of things. I think Kenny Pickett is starting to figure it out a little bit. Um, they're showing flashes of being able to throw the football efficiently and and get balanced. Um, we saw them tear apart the Colts uh, on prime time, and this offense actually looked pretty good despite some variance. And I think at 5,200, uh, Kenny Pickett is in a similar boat to Justin Fields when he was 5,400, right? Obviously, Fields has far more upside than Pickett uh, in general. Um, so... How are they the same? Well, it's it's mostly the price tag, and it's a young quarterback that's really starting to come into his own a little bit. And as the uh, the coaching staff gets a little bit more comfortable with him in the backfield, then they're going to sort of open up their offense for him a little bit. And we saw that with Fields, and we're going to see that more with Kenny Pickett going forward. Um, so this kid can chuck it. And I think he's got some capable pass catchers here with Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth, George Pickens, for sure. Uh, would probably stay off of the Steven Sims and the, and the Gunnar Olszewski type type plays down here. But, um, you know, he's got three guys that he can get the ball to. They'll even use Najee a little bit out of the backfield in the passing game. Um, you know, that said, Najee did tweak something this last week against the Colts, so if he is out, it's going to be the Benny Snell show, along with Anthony McFarlane, uh, who is 4K flat. Uh, both of them got run, and both of them, would, well, they will probably split the running back work. Um, I don't think they are awful plays to mix into your deep tournament pools, uh, either one of them, in the event that Najee is out. Um if Najee plays, though, I think it's 6,100. I think this is a fine play to get to because we like attacking Atlanta's defense over here, and you can attack them 
you know, more so with the passing game, but you can definitely get to him in the run game as well uh, with a very high upside back. Not super stoked about uh, the price tag for Najee necessarily, but um, in in a lower total game, especially if he's hobbled. So just something to you know, that we're going to have to keep an eye on as we move forward. Um, but I think he's definitely playable uh, in stacks. Uh, really like the 5,200 for Pickett, as I mentioned. And I think both of these guys, Deontay and Pickens, uh, are playable at 52 and 51. You can mix in some Friar Muth. He's probably going to just lead it in terms of ownership. Um, maybe a little bit noisy so far. So uh, keep an eye on this number uh, at 4,300. I think it's an it's a fine play, and but this could steam a little bit. So be careful of that. If you want to get off some of that, get to Pickett and Deontay, get to Pickett and Pickens or something like that, uh, and then run it back on the other side with really my my only kind of interesting piece uh, is probably Drake London, 4,700. Really like this price tag for him. Um, Atlanta just wants to run the football, but unfortunately Pittsburgh's defense is very very good on the ground. Um, or against the run. So that sort of suggests that um, Pittsburgh could actually, you know, cover a game here. I mean, like I said, it's pick, so they're not covering anything. Uh, it opened one and a half and two Atlanta. Um, so the early money has shown on Pittsburgh. And um, I think that's warranted. I, I agree with that move. And like I said, I made it pick to begin with. So um, I think Pittsburgh can win this game. And how are they going to do it? Well, it's going to be with their pass catchers. and Because Atlanta wants to run the ball, they're going to try and slow things down here with Cordero Patterson. But like I said, Pittsburgh's defense is really strong against the run. Where they are a little bit vulnerable is in the passing game. And for Atlanta, they do have a little bit of upside in terms of efficiency in the passing game. They don't throw it a hell of a lot, but when they do, it's short yardage, and it's to guys like Drake London and Ole Zacchaeus. Um, without Pitts, uh, I'm not touching any of the tight ends here with Ferkser, Pruitt, and Hess. Uh, I think they're every one of these guys getting snaps. Um, I'm also staying off of Demir Bird and, and Tyler Algier. Um, Bird because of volume concerns, and Algier just because... Uh, is a bad spot, right? So um, really do generally like playing Cordero Patterson, 5,800. Uh, if you wanted to do something crazy and you like Atlanta in this spot, I mean, it's not crazy crazy, but you could play a Cordero Patterson and a Falcons defense once again. I've uh, kind of shielded this before, uh, but if they're going to let him return kicks, he is the number one running back, and he has touchdown equity in that regard, and he has rushing upside, so he's going to get work, and, he, you know, he has special teams upside no matter how um, how long it may be, so it is there. Um, at 3200 I'm not crazy about the Falcons' price tag here, but, um, you know, they're a defense. You can mix them in against a pretty mediocre offense, despite the fact that they may be figuring it out a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, afternoon games here. Try and blast through these again um, as quickly as possible. Miami and San Francisco, I think you can get to everybody in this game, to be quite honest. Um, now, San Francisco's defense really, really good, but Miami's defense is really, really bad, right? So that's going to force Miami's really, really good offense to throw the football. And... In high pace games, um, that's going to kind of weigh on San Francisco's defense a little bit. So don't be surprised if, despite uh, the Niners being a really good unit, uh, they give up some points here. I think Miami could definitely score against this team. So how are they going to do it? Well, it'd be the main culprits, Tyreek um, and Waddle with Tua. Probably not much in the way of Gesicki at 3,300. Not super excited about that. She's not getting enough volume. Um, in a high pace game, though, uh, you can mix him in in stacks for sure. Uh, Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert, both of these guys played for the Niners. So if you want to play for the play the uh, narrative game, um, I mean, go ahead. But uh, in general, Miami's rush offense isn't very good. Um, now, they are a hell of a lot better with... Wilson and most are back there. They're, they're far b more balanced. Um, that said, you know, this San Francisco's run defense is their better unit. Uh, and this is just a really, really good defense overall. So um, 
with a sort of deficiency in Miami's running game and a, going up against a, a pretty good unit over here, I think it's probably um, maybe a bit chasey at these price tags to be targeting some Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert. That said, if you want to stack the game, uh, you can mix them in. I, I don't think this is bad uh, necessarily at all. You're going to probably have to force them in. They're not going to project well enough. Um, but like, for example, at 6,100 Jeff Wilson, I'd just much rather pay an extra 300 bucks and, and get to Travis Etienne here in, in Jacksonville, um, against Detroit. Like it, it's just a far and away better play for what's at least at the moment, um, similar ownership. So, uh, Really not crazy about the Miami Miami run game. Mostly just the pass catchers here. Don't forget about Trent Sherfield at 3,300 in deep tournament pools as well. Um, but you can stack this whole team. Uh, okay, San Francisco on the other side. I think this is a really, really good spot for the Niners. The problem is, like, who's, who's the work going to go to? Well, I mean, I have no idea. This is why I think this game is such an excellent spot for full-on game stacks. Um, you could play a 4-2 San Francisco Miami stack here um, if you could make it fit price wise I, I think that's very reasonable I think there's going to be points here and we're actually showing at least in the betting markets um, this total is only at about 46 and that's really just because the San Francisco defense is so good but um, this like Miami's as I mentioned their their defense is awful uh, I, th I think San Francisco could put up 30 here in a heartbeat. Um, so all of the price tags on these guys are pretty gettable. 66 for Debo, 61 for IU, maybe a little elevated for him, but in a very high paced game, I think it's fine. Um, George Kittle at 5,000, probably a little elevated given the 27 other dudes that they have, but uh, also fine. 86 for CMC. I think this is a really, really good play here. Uh, he's going to get a lot of his work, most of his work in a passing game. And that's even if he plays, right? He tweaked a groin or something. In that event, it'd be Elijah Mitchell getting pretty much all of the running back work. They'll mix in like a use check or, or whatever they want to do. Um, but at 4,800, I think this is a really, really good play. Now, Miami is a pass funnel defense, meaning they are going to give it up mostly in the passing game. Uh, they're going to try and stop the run uh, and be pretty decent stopping the run but San Francisco is so balanced here that Miami is not going to be able to stop anybody um, so the Niners should be able to score and score in bunches here uh, I really like getting to San Francisco pretty much everybody uh, you could even mix in a super deep Jawan Jennings type of play uh, in deep tournament pools if you're getting to a lot of this game think at 3200 um, you know it's kind of at this price tag it's it's kind of a, a sneaky good value um at a 1.820 point per dollar play. Uh, of course, it's not going to project very high, right, at five points or whatever, but, um, you know, not the worst play in the world. Uh, Niners defense, um, probably going to stay off of them, even though, this, like, once again, they're a really, really good unit. Wouldn't be surprised if Tua throws a pick six here, but, um, you know, it, it, it's okay. If you land on it, it it's not the worst. Uh, okay, moving on. Seattle and the Rams going to try and get through these last three uh, pretty quickly here. Uh, this one in particular, we can get through pretty quickly. Seattle laying seven on the road uh, somehow against the Rams. Uh, Rams are f terrible, man. They're so, so bad. Total's only about 41, 42 here. Um, I think getting to Seattle's offense, we usually need the other team to score um, and be potent enough because Seattle's defense is pretty bad. We saw what the Raiders did to them. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get that this week with the Rams. It's probably going to be Perkins, right? He has a little bit of rushing upside, but uh, the Rams offense just in general is, is a pretty poor unit overall. So uh, we're going to need them to score in order for Seattle pieces to really go off. Um, so that, that really takes me off of uh, a bunch of Seahawks stacks. Um, Kenneth Walker at 18% ownership. I think this is too high. The Rams' run defense is really, really, really good. Kenneth Walker scored twice last week, but he only had like 26 yards or on, you know, however many carries or whatever. So super noisy. Um, he actually vultured the touchdowns from Lockett and Metcalf uh, in the passing game. Otherwise, those stacks would have done, you know, much better last week. So really not excited about about Seattle um, all that much this week. 3,600 
for their defense. Um, really kind of marginal, even though they are getting a backup quarterback uh, against a really bad offense. So on the other side, it is probably going to be Perkins. We're not sure. We're not for sure about Matt Stafford just yet. He's 5,500. Uh, probably not going to play, though. Um, I don't think they're going to be playing any games with him in the concussions. Um, the running back room here with Kyron Williams and uh, and Cam Akers can't really touch it. Uh, they've had a terrible run offense all season long, uh, and at these price tags, they should be half this um, for the efficiency that they've provided. So no thank you. Um, Van Jefferson, Tyler Higby, they're going to lead the pass catchers along with Ben Skoranek. Maybe a 2-2 at will pops off again. Who knows? Um, probably wouldn't count on that, but I uh, really don't think you can um, get to anybody outside of maybe a Van Jefferson. 4800 though. I mean, it's kind of a stiff price tag. Really not excited about that. Do think Tyler Higby's okay uh, at 37, and he's probably a pretty decent uh, tight end play. Uh, okay, now getting to the last two games, um, Chargers-Vegas. I think there's going to be a lot of points here. This is one of those games that is projecting over 50. Uh, Chargers laying about one, one and a half on the road right now. Um, and by all accounts, by all measures, this projects to be a, a pretty close game. So I um, really like the pass, pass game from the Chargers Um like getting to them pretty much every week. We're not getting the price inversion that we had previously with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, but Mike Williams, well, we we've got to be we've got to see him on the field in order to take advantage of that price inversion, right? So, uh, no idea if he's actually going to play this week. Uh, if not, it's Allen, it's Josh Palmer, and it's some DeAndre Carter, um, with mixed in with a little bit of Gerald Everett. Everett at 4,400, probably a a little expensive. Uh, not the worst play in the world. You can mix him in. If, and like I said, it should be a pretty high total game here, uh, and you can play a 4,400 tight end in those environments. If Mike Williams does play, I still like Josh Palmer at 56. Um, he'll probably still get a similar workload. That just takes me off of DeAndre Carter uh, if uh, if Williams plays. Um, love Eckler as I love Eckler as every single week. Uh, he's getting most of his work, once again, in the passing game, just kind of dump-offs, screens, because this this offense is so pass-heavy. Um at 8,500, I think he's a very similar play to CMC in the San Francisco game. If CMC is out, uh, I think this is a very easy pivot um, if you had to choose. And you probably do. I mean, 86, 8,500 for your running backs. Probably not doing that in many tournament builds to begin with. Um, really good pivot down to 85. I think he's 86. Yeah, whatever. Uh, similar price tags, price tags nonetheless. Um Really good uh, value play from Eckler, as is, as he is every single week. Um, and once again, I like Keenan Allen, 6,500. Vegas, Vegas defense is terrible, and you can absolutely get to him. I think he's healthy now. I think they're comfortable with giving him a uh, more regular workload. And at 6,500, he's just underpriced. Um, same thing with Josh Palmer. I think at 56, especially if Mike Williams is out, I think he's underpriced as well. Wouldn't touch the Chargers. Uh, I think they're gonna, there's just going to be a lot of points in this game, and their their run defense is really, really bad. Uh, so we could very well see Josh Jacobs go off again. Uh, 7,900 for Jacobs. He's coming in 18 20%. It's probably where he should be just about every week in this matchup. I think it's a, a really, really good spot. You'll probably see the steam a little bit to 25% in some tournaments. Um Price tag, admittedly, it, it, you know, it's a little elevated for him, but uh, he's getting the work, man, and he's producing. Um, of course, 300 yards of total offense and, and two scores is a little bit noisy. Can't really project that for him every week, but, man, he's getting a lot of touches, and he's very efficient with them. So um, you can play him again and use him as runbacks, use him as, as a one-off, uh, use him in, in Vegas stacks. You can do whatever you want. Same thing with Devontae. You can play him every single week against everybody. Um, we want to attack the Chargers defense usually a bit more with the running game. Um, so if I had to choose between the two, Jacobs or Devontae Adams, I'd, I'd probably just play Jacobs. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Devontae isn't playable. It's like There's going to be points in this game, and um, he's far and away the number one here. It's not like you know he's getting DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett type splits with Mac Hollins and Foster Moreau or anything like that. Um, he's still going to get 10 targets here and at least, and, uh, he could very well 
and turn that into 180 yards and two scores uh, very, very easily. Uh, that said, you can play Derek Carr as well, 5,600. Um, once again, spreading out in the quarterback room, really good point per dollar, really good value play here uh, for Derek Carr, even though he is susceptible to turning the ball over, um, as he did last week when he turned it over, I think, twice in the first quarter. Uh, Mac Hollins, you can mix him in in deep tournament teams as well, 4,600. It's not bad. Uh, Foster Moreau, 3,600, also not bad. Just, once again, kind of uh, volume concern for both of these guys. Uh, most of the offense going to run through Jacobs and Devontae Adams. Um, Keelan Cole, probably not, but uh, if you're playing 20, 30, whatever Raiders or game stacks here in this uh, Vegas um, and Chargers game, sure, go ahead and mix in some Keelan Cole. Not the worst. Okay. Let's get to it. Uh, last game of the day here, KC and Cincinnati. Uh, we are at about an hour here, so I'll try and keep this quick, guys. Um, so I think you can play everybody here uh, once again. Um, it's going to be harder, of course, to get to Mahomes and Kelsey. Uh, we've got to keep an eye on Juju. Not even sure if he's going to play. Um, yeah, maybe he is going to play. And I, just, I mean, I can't keep it straight with all these guys. Uh I do know that Kadarius Tony still hasn't practiced, so he's probably going to be out, which means it's the uh, Kelsey, MVS, maybe Sky Moore show. Justin Watson probably get a little bit of work. Who knows? Um, Isaiah Pacheco, 5,700. In most game scripts, um, I think this is an okay play to mix in stacks. I wouldn't be targeting him as um, a really good running, or running back play necessarily against uh, Cincinnati's you know, pretty respectable uh, run defense. Um, but I mean, Kansas city can score. So, uh, you can play pretty much everybody on the offense here. I think my favorites would just be Kelsey. Um, Juju at 57, I think it's, it's good price. I really like MVS at 41 as well. Uh, but I think you can play everybody probably just stay off of the chiefs defense, 3,500. This ownership number, as we can see over here with the standard deviation, super, super noisy. I think we've just got a couple of spots that are coming in with last week's figure or something. There's no chance that they're ever going to be this high. Um, in a, in a game total over 50, over 50. And I think it's 53. So, um, it's just this is just a noisy number. Don't don't pay attention to this as of right now. This is probably pretty accurate for Kelsey though. Uh, he always projects well, um, and I think this is a really good spot for him to see a, a good bit of volume. Um, so like the Chiefs would mostly prefer uh, cheaper stacks like a Mahomes MVS um, type of deal with a Kelsey to make it cheap. Um, or, or prefer them just as one-offs. I think that's fine. You can play them as one-offs, or you can play them just as runbacks uh, in Cincinnati stacks. With Burrow at 69, a little more aggressive to get to him, but he's projecting very, very well. Um, they're going to throw the ball a lot. Have to see about Jamar Chase this week. Not sure if he's going to be back, if they're going to let him play, but um, suggesting, I mean, since he, he practiced last week, uh, that he should be okay, or they're gearing him up to... Um, to uh, to play this week. <clears throat> so Joe Mixon, also have to keep an eye on him. He had a concussion. He's been out last, uh, he was out last week, may have been two weeks now. Um, it's at least a game and a half. So we've got to keep an eye on him. 7,100 though, if he plays, I think is a really, really good price for him. Um, I think you can play him in this type of game script for sure. They'll use him in the passing game, in the running game, and, the, and they'll give him 25 touches, no problem. Um, if Chase plays, I'd rather play him as opposed to T. Higgins. Uh, you'll see T. Higgins' ownership number fluctuate quite a bit, as we can already kind of see some projection models are projecting that uh, as well, or are hinting that, that we'll see Jamar Chase play, and this number will tank. Um, it'll probably invert between the two guys. Tyler Boyd, though, at 5,300, really do like this. You might have to force him in. We'll see probably some steam on all of Cincinnati's offense going into the end of the week here. But uh, as of right now, nobody's playing these guys. And I think it's a fantastic spot. I think they could very well win everything. Um, so this is a really, really good team here. And a very, I think they can cover this number. They're catching two and a half and three. Uh, I bet Cincinnati already. You know, that could be, you know, famous last words. But um, I think, Catching two and a half and three here is, is probably a little bit aggressive uh, against Cincinnati, or excuse me, against Kansas City. So um, should be points here, and you can play pretty much everybody all throughout this game. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, 
once again, we're, we're about an hour, but I think, you know, this week there's a lot of different spots that you can go to. So we had a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, quickly with stacks, uh, not so much on stacks in the Jets Minnesota game. You can play them. Um, not my favorite, certainly probably just one off pieces, uh, from Washington, mostly maybe a Danny dimes, naked player or a Saquon naked, um, from the Giants. Uh, I, I do kind of like some hidden stacks in Philly and Tennessee. I think you can play those. like some Cleveland for sure. If you want to play a Kyle Allen in cash, I don't think that's the worst play in the world, to be quite honest. Um, nothing from Denver here. Uh, maybe a, a Greg Dulcich or like a Cortland Sutton one-off, uh, something like that. Outside of that, uh, they're pretty much just unplayable. Um, maybe Denver defense. 2400 is pretty really good price for them. Uh, Baltimore on the other side, just Lamar, I think for me, mostly, uh, you can play Mark Andrews, of course, but, uh, really not, I mean, maybe you want to play Gus, Ed Gus Edwards at 5,400. Eh, it's, it's not, it's not excellent. Um, so probably just, you know, singleton pieces, very, um, minimal exposures for the most part. Green Bay, you can stack, uh, Chicago, you can stack really only in the event that Fields is playing outside of that. I think it's David Montgomery only. Green Bay, you can play pretty much everybody. Uh, Jacksonville, Detroit, you can play everybody here too. Uh, really, really like ETN. I think this is by far the best play of the week, uh, even having gone through these games like nine times um, now that I have. Uh, 6,400 is just way, way, way too cheap. If he plays, it's a smash. Um, Detroit on the other side, it's going to be Amon Ra. You can play golf too. Uh, Pittsburgh, I like. And I like their passing offense here. I think they can win this game. Um think they're a pretty decent play, even at pick, in a betting markets as well. Miami, San Francisco, really like this game as well. Um, like pretty much everybody from San Francisco, really the main culprits, of course, from Miami. Uh, I think there's going to be points here. Probably a really good sort of live betting game. Um, Seattle and the Rams, nothing here for me. And Chargers, Vegas, really like both sides of this as well. I think you can play pretty much everybody, including quarterbacks. Uh, and same thing with Kansas City and Cincinnati. Uh, like everybody there also. So uh, once again, you know, 10 different stacks that we can play. And um, there should be a lot of points to go around and a pretty should be a pretty high scoring week. So um, keep an eye out for projections updates later on this week as we get more injury news. Uh, we'll be pushing those over the next um, several days. And yeah, that's it. Uh, good luck, everybody.